Most days, I could pretend that my life was normal. I was a 20-year-old woman searching for my place in the world, trying to decide my future. The only difference was that I had three normal lives. And on my 21st birthday, just eight and a half months from now, I would have to choose which one to keep and which to forfeit forever. As I stood in my home on Lafayette Square, pulling long satin gloves onto my hands, it was easier not to think about the daunting choices set before me or the other paths I occupied. I had become adept at living in the moment, a skill many people wished they could master, though it had come at a great cost to me. Here, I was the daughter of an important U.S. senator and had served as his official hostess since my mother died. We were also on the cusp of the American Civil War. But at the moment, we were late to the White House. Papa, I called from the foyer as Safira, my maid, handed me the second glove. Mrs. Lincoln does not like when we're late. Papa finally left his office and joined me, pulling on his own gloves. I'm surprised she didn't cancel, he said, his usual good mood snuffed out by the stress of the week. She's waited her entire life to be in the White House, I reminded him, knowing how much Mary Todd Lincoln reveled in being the first lady. She'd hardly let a little thing like a war dampen her plans. Papa smiled for the first time in days. I'm sorry to be late, Margaret. I was distracted. He accepted his cape from Joseph, our butler and man of all work. There was agitation and worry in the tilt of Papa's distinguished eyebrows, and I suspected it was more than distraction that had made him late. Is something wrong? I asked. Papa tried to wipe the worry from his face. Nothing to concern you with, my dear. Just work. When you are one of President Lincoln's advisors, work is not just work. Safira lifted my blue velvet cape over my shoulders, but I didn't take my eyes off Papa. He was never difficult to read. He'd been a minister and a military man once upon a time, and held himself with confidence and purpose. Now he was a senator and close confidant of the president. But I'd never seen his shoulders stoop so low, or his face fill with such grief.